Thank you for joining me in the demonstration of the E3 Forensic Platform when working with Windows. With this demonstration, we will be working with a Windows 11 image. Everything in E3 works in cases. Each time you add data, a new case is created, or you can open an existing case and add additional evidence to that case. I have already started a case, so we are going to go to Add Evidence. Any data added into E3 is added as evidence. So details are kept such as the hash value, the time it was added, etc. as part of that addition process. When adding evidence that is a drive image, we can select to go to the image file and select the auto detect option. If it is a split image, like the one in my demonstration, you just need to go to the first file of the image. If they are all in one directory, E3 will automatically detect the other files for addition to the case. You can customize your addition by changing the name so you see it referenced as that name in the tree view. It does not change the name of your evidence. Based on the file system of the image, you can change the settings of how the data is added. This is an NTFS file system, so you get questions about those settings. For the file systems currently supported, please review our website for the latest list. When you add evidence, you can select what scope you want to review that evidence as. You can search for deleted files and folders. We can add the trash from the NTFS root. We can recover folder structure from a bad image. And we can add the unallocated space folder to the NTFS root. We're going to leave everything default in this example and click the OK button. E3 will quickly add the image file to the case. And you can immediately explore the nodes in the tree. One of the best features of E3 is how quickly you can triage an image or machine. We are going to go directly to that area where you will see how quickly this process is out. Triage is a great way to get started in seeing what is happening with a machine. In this example, we can see they have OneDrive for cloud. We have quick access to their downloads, and we also see immediately their email. This is a great way if you are doing a consultation or a case, you can get a rough idea of the time you are looking at for the examination. I'm going to open the OST file and work with the E3 wizard to process the artifact. You can select raw mode, or we can scan for deleted messages from the database. We recommend that you scan in raw mode for the best possible data recovery. This allows you to look for orphan messages that have been deleted by the end user, but not deleted from the database itself. It also helps fix any damage to OST and PST databases. E3 can process through dozens of email archive types natively. We are going to finish the processing of the OST files and expand the nodes to get into our mailbox. Once in the mailbox, you can go through messages, see the metadata, and see the different attachments. Now we can expand our window up a little bit to get a better picture, and then we can see all the information such as the RFC header, the text HTML, raw HTML, and then the actual attachment types. So there's one image and a zip file as well. E3 has over 100 different viewers built in. You can expand the viewers and see the properties, the thumbnail, view the file, view the document, view the text, view extended text, and then obviously our hex. We also have access to a zip file. From our viewers, we can see the contents. Email is just one of many artifact analysis engines in E3. The full platform has some powerful analysis functions in the Content Analysis Wizard that allow you to index data, sort or carve out data, OCR, also known as Optical Character Recognition, scan for malware, and do some specialized image scans based on their content. The options are extensive, and they can be threaded in E3, so you can keep working while the content analysis is done. With any of the indexing and OCR options, multiple languages are also available beyond just English. Once the content analysis is done, some markers show the scans were complete, and we also can access the sorted data tab. This is where we can see data that has been processed and categorized by different header libraries. This is a quick reference method to filter and find data. My example with graphics allows you to see the properties as well as a quick bookmark of that data. Data can also be exported outside of the image with a right click and a selection of the export command. Data triage is always available as a workflow reference. I am going back to the data triage to review the internet browsing data. From triage, I see two browsers, two of which are active. I can select either one of these to review data from the browsers. 
Reviewing these artifacts allows me to get into specifics based on the artifact type. With Microsoft Edge, we can see that there's a profiles list, a default user, and then a profile user. I can expand the list open, go to the profile one expands our history. The data will be auto-populated to show the URL, the title, and the visit date. If any downloads took place through the browser, we're going to have access to that information as well. Gives us the URL, the download start date, the download status to complete, the not complete, and then the file path of where that data was stored, as well as any login information. If it resides, it's going to be listed as well as any keywords. You can also review cookies. Additional file system artifacts can be found with triage as well. In this case, I can review jump files. E3 tells me there are two folders and two of them are active. So, we'll have access to the destinations and the custom destinations. My folders, documents, office artifacts, office backstage. We're going to move directly down to the registry information. We're going to let that parse out. While that is parsing out, we're going to look at the Windows 10 and 11 artifacts. We have access to the logs and the prefetch files. If we investigate the logs, we can see and identify specific information. We also have full search capabilities inside the software. E3 will also do a malware scan. So if any of these files have malware suspicion, we're going to be able to see that information as well. We will continue to expand the registry information. We have access to AmCache, which gives us access to the root and the user information. We can see what kind of devices have been connected to the computer, whether it's a storage device, whether they printed or have a mounted display. If you go into other keys like display, we can see that there's a default monitor and then we can get in, can look at the device parameters and properties. You have full access to review registry data from anything from hardware connections to the connections to software such as Microsoft Office. You can also see the network, whether it's a home group, whether it's the internet, whether it's managed profiles, whether it's unmanaged terminal server information, URL, or wireless connections. Details like hotspots if they're available, any tethering that may have taken place, OS information, and any parse registry keys, we're going to let that process out. We can look at scheduled tasks using the search options so you can see if there is something specific that took place in Outlook. If you get no results, you can look at all the programs recently used, see the security keys, and check the timeline of events. From here, you can see there was a wired connection. It was last connected to the network. We have that value key. We see when it was first connected, it was connected by the developer. If that does not jump out as a logical choice, you can continue to review and look at the task timeline. You can search or you can move on to look at the Windows log on information. You have moved one step closer to completing a review of the data to know where you will want to deep dive into the data. E3 can provide quick and detailed analysis in one platform. Supporting a variety of file systems, evidence types, and more, you have the perfect balance of affordability and comprehensive processing built into a complete platform. Reach out to us to have a custom demonstration done about a particular artifact or to see other functions such as smartphone processing and analysis, as well as remote imaging of computers and cloud data.